Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Max Plane Dawn of War Unification. Today I have another faction guide for you and we are cl almost almost done. It's the second to last guide. It is about the Witch Hunters. They got a few new things. I say a few, quite a lot of cool new things in uh, version 6.9 um, at tier 2 Titan and stuff. But what are the Witch Hunters? Um, the Witch Hunters are what the name states. They are hunting witches, uh, so to speak. Um, they uh, you have the Ordomalius and the Ordo Hereticus. The Ordomalius is about all about killing demons and they are all about killing witches, so to say uh, traitors and uh, stuff like that, like uh, internal affairs, you could say, as if, if I got that right. Um, they are consisting in this game, I'm not sure if it's uh, in the lore uh, pretty uh, the same or if there is another a part of it but in the in the game they're consisting of uh, um, police like the the arbeids kind of you could i don't know how to pronounce them they are called arbiters arbeids whatever i pronounce it like the voice over does they are basically the police or as my <laughs> scottish relative would say the police <laughs> and uh, the sister of battle now there are some people asking uh, why are the sister of battle here and in their own faction well, there are two explanations for it. One, this mod came before Soulstorm, so before the Sisters of Battle were um, implemented by Relic or Iron Law or by whoever. So this, this mod is way older, so they technically were the first one implementing it to the Dawn of War. And second, they are more of a militant um, order, you could say. They have more about uh, warfare, whereas the Sisters of Battle standalone faction is all about religious, ecclesiastical, or whatever you pronounce it in English. So they are all about the religious stuff and they are more about combat and warfare, you could say. So more hands-on dirty work, you could say, <laughs> instead of praying all the time. <laughs> Okay, and yeah, as usual, I have prepared a safe game where we will jump into right now. And here we are in the safe game. Um, before we will jump into the buildings and units, as usual, we will talk about resources and unit caps. The resources are pretty much as standard as it gets. You have requisition, you have power, uh, listening posts, generators, you, 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 you get the point. Interestingly enough, the uh, uh, third, the LP3s give quite a lot of requisition. Um, a little more than it's probably good, but yeah, they, they get the resource the standard. And also the unit caps are the standard um, 2020 at max. You start with 10 zero and you have like two upgrades for plus five squad cap and four upgrades for plus four vehicle cap, also pretty standard. But you also get a plus three vehicle cap from your vehicle building, plus two from the auto hereticus, um, how should you say? Uh, path branch building and you also get uh, in T1 you can get a repressor add-on that allows you to get one a week cap so you can build the one repressor in tier one so that's about the caps so this there's not not much special about it we will now directly jump into the buildings and the buildings are somewhat special in the way um, you have the HQ the HQ by itself produces your um, workers your primary capo unit, uh, uh, the repressor I talked about, and some hero units. Uh, you can see it in the tech tree later on in more detail. But it also gets access to two turrets at the side, which detect and can help defend your uh, HQ area. So if you have valuable buildings like your tech buildings, like your tier two building, the relic of faith, uh, you can put it next to your HQ and have um, some turret emplacements. You could say so it can. Be defended easily. For unit production, you have your Adapter Sororitas Convent Militia, military, which is your barracks, so to speak, where you get all most of your sister units, including a uh, hero. Um, then in tier two, you get your vehicle building, which gives you access to a, a multitude of vehicles. And then you have your branch building. The branch buildings are either your Adapter Sororitas Amorum which gives you more uh, sister units and upgrades for your sisters or the Orodo Hereticus Chamber. We will jump over to the second player so you can see all the units here, including Skions. Everybody is looking for them. I will tell you not now. I will tell you in the tech tree how to get them, but they are in the game and you can get them if you know how, basically. Yeah, and also um, and for Orodo Hereticus, you also have some uh, 
cool assassins, like uh, four assassins. To be honest, there are like four, uh, a fifth one, but that is attached to a squad. So this is your unit production buildings, and then you have t uh, tech building and research building is your reliquary of faith. Um, it only has researches for sister of battle prayers. Um, it's not prayers, it's acts of faith. And as you can see here, you can get Saint Celeste and Saint Catherine. Saint Celeste is limited for the uh, Adeptus Orators branch, whereas Saint Catherine, uh, as the tier two Titan we will talk about later, is available for both paths. Um, about uh, the economy and stuff, you have your listing posts. As I said, uh, that LP three gives you quite a lot of requisition. Then you have your plasma generators. And um, I can't show you on this map, but you have a bigger plasma generator, uh, surprise, surprise. But the bigger plasma generator also has a little, um, how should I say, a, a turret inside, or so a flamey turret to kind of defend himself. So it's that's kind of unique in that sense. And then you have the turrets. The turrets are also very unique in the sense that they are do not shooting in one direction. In survival, you have more uh, traditional turrets, but these turrets make flames if you upgraded some melter fire around them the damage base damage is very very low so uh, defending your base with these turrets in tier one is like not even possible um, but uh, i have some suggestions that this should be increased a bit later on you can also get these very expensive shield generators but having um how should i say infiltrated turrets is nice in late late game scenario uh, situations and it's also an additional add-on. So you can get the weapon upgrades and still get a shield gen generator, so which is uh, nice in a sense. So it, it does not uh, exclude your weapon upgrades. Um, your buildings sometimes have an aura and uh, most importantly, the two branch buildings have uh, some global auras, you could say. For the Adeptus Orators, let's see. Divine Blessing, while built the prayers chanted within protect most squads increasing the armor <coughs> so your squads get additional armor and this one for the order uh, hereticus chamber um, gives you here assassin training while built most squads are trained to strike true increasing their maximum damage so more armor more damage depending on what paths you choose and all these flying bits here these are enabled by the two saints being alive here. The red ones I think is for Saint Celeste and the white ones for Saint Catherine, just um, so you know. Okay, this is the buildings. Now quickly jump over to the units. Um, as usual we start off with the heroes and builder units, but before we jump into the actual units and what they do, I have a little overview for you, which will be up right now. It's the Mertidum trait that almost all sisters uh, share. It's basically if any any system model, like even the, the cheapest system model dies, you get one martyrdom counter. And the martyrdom counter increases the health and morale of your squads and heroes. You can see it here in the overview, what, uh, how much it increases. You see it, it doesn't look like a lot, like for your Amolness it's like 2 HP, for your Cannon it's 2.5 HP and so on and so forth. But I have also like the HP percent you increase per, by per 10 counters. And then you can see um, which squads are affected the most in, in their, let's say, percentage HP. And the biggest um, percentage bonus is by the Palantin Primus and Secundus, which is a survival exclusive a retinue to the Abyss. So, um, and from the generally available units, it is the Molnus of all units. But the Molnus also gets an HP upgrade, so whatever. It's, it's uh, bonus stats. The morale also, you can see, adds up over time. Um, I'm not sure if there's a maximum duration these Mertidum counters are available. Uh, there were some numbers tossed around like 10 to 15 minutes or so. Uh, so if a game goes longer, these counters may or may not decay uh, at some point. But yeah, so basically every sister that dies makes the other sisters fight harder. I don't think there's any bonuses apart from HP and morale. I'm not sure if the damage is also increased. <clears throat> but if you have more intel to that, you can put it in the comments. Okay, with this with, with this overview out of the way, we will now can jump into the actual units. We will start with the builder units. Your standard builder units is a Sentinel, the Sentinel Powerlift, 
basically a yeah sentinel which only does repairing and building stuff but it has also an toggable abilities the power claw on off which enables their melee weapon this big number isn't uh, reflective of what it actually does uh, to my experience but yeah it can be uh, can be used in combat but it reduces the movement speed. The movement speed is like this and when you enable it the, it is really slowed down by quite a lot. Um, yeah can repair but cannot be repaired by itself. Uh, other sentinels cannot repair it, which I find odd but also probably uh, to be not overpowered like having a <laughs> sentinel um, work or rush or something but it later gets on auto repair protocols which um, can be researched in tier two or maybe three which enables uh, this unit and some other units some auto repair basically repairs the units without costing anything but it um cannot use anything da, 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 da. while active all power lift systems are shut down and thus vehicle cannot move or use claws this is the same for the other um, vehicles i think as well the other I more or less building hero unit is the Molness you have here she doesn't start with the skull but you can get upgrades so she gets the skull which detects gets this harness for some additional weapons also a form upgrade and then you can <coughs> also give her a plasma pistol she builds she repairs by quite a bit and has the rights of restoration um, makes a random portion of the damage sustained heal so it's basically a random heal for a vehicle is it only a vehicle or is it also a building no only vehicles which makes sense so she's a repair unit but also has some flamer and plasma stuff uh, later on if you research it. Basically you could think of a sister of battle tech marine kind of. She also has commander armor so pretty versatile in that. Now we will jump over to the uh, commanders and um, as you may notice I have split the stuff uh, on the left it's more sister of battle on the right it is uh, auto reticus. I will tell you which is exclusive to the, the path and which is not. Um, if I do not tell anything, it is uh, available for both paths, you could say, for both branches. Your primary commander is the Cannoness. The Cannoness cannot be attached to a squad, but she is pretty uh, strong on her own. She can get a, a hood of this this pod disco hood here, which may gives her a true sight, and a jetpack, which lets her jump. Can get a combi flamer, and later on combi melter, as well as a force weapon, which is basically a big old or whatever they call it, like a maze kind of thingy. She can use various abilities. She does not start with these abilities. Um, you need to research Liber Hereticus and the Mantle of Ophelia. The Liber Heresius and Hereticus <coughs> gives you basically a map pack for a brief uh, amount of time. If you click it, you have uh, revealed a map and have also True Sight map wide for a short amount of time. The Mantle of Ophelia um, is a um, how should I say, invulnerability thing which keeps her alive um, during dire self peril. This um, I'm also not sure if it's like true um, invulnerability or only I survive with one HP vulnerability. She can also pray to summon Seraphim, but the Seraphim, if you click it, I have it already on the field, you can only have one. Requires her to be basically maximum health as if you. Um, click it and it, you lose 99% of your health and then you have to regenerate it so uh, use with caution and as I said she can jump if you have researched it and this one the true murder act of faith a prayer these acts of faith all cost you requisition I think um, because at the time there was no uh, faith resource and whatnot so only sisters of battle have faith they use money <laughs> pretty uh, uh, fitting if you know a bit about history about real life church and stuff um, But I digress this true matter act of faith uh, Recovers health quite by quite a lot of in it's only by herself But renders her unable to fight and defend so she can use it to heal herself basically um, But to be able to use it your matter counter must reach 50 so you need to have lost 50 Sister of battle model. So this is more of a late game thing that can keep your cannoness alive. Can I stop it with Q? No, she is now here and healing her by quite a bit. But that's her. Um, later on you have also have access to Ephrael Stern. She is a 
uh, Sister of Battle exclusive because she is built from the uh, Adepto Sohotas Amorum. Um, she cannot be on the field with the uh, um, what is it with the uh, Inquisitor Command Squad because she needs an an add-on as well that is exclusive to her. She has frag grenades. She has crack grenades. She has divine protection, uh, health Im damage of incoming attacks. Pretty nice to have, and the Demonifuge, which is uh, a big AOE if I'm um, not mistaken. While she's in the stage, she suffers minimal weapon damage, but cannot target abilities. She is practically renders immune. All menace with a dead approach, psychic damage. Basically, it's a big old storm around her. Look at it! Wow, it is really nice. And she is like floating in the air, and yeah, she can also jump, as you uh, have seen here. Last commander unit, commander style unit of. Oh, she has also commander armor. Oh, this I didn't know. Sister Hospitala is a tier three. Sister Hospitaler, so kind of an apothecary, can attach to a squad to um, and uh, increases the regeneration of the squad and uh, units nearby. Can uh, only be built in tier 3 and is limited to 2, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and as, as you see, she has commander armor. Uh, she is the sister of battle and uh, Adaptive Sword has, and also states she has martyrdom, which is currently. Bugged, she does not receive Matatum counters, but yeah, it's probably fixed for the next version. So, this is the Sister of Battle commanders. Now, we will jump over to the Autoreticus commanders. And the first one we have here is Judge Dredd, uh, the Arbeits Lord Marshal, uh, which was kind of requested uh, in of the community. We will jump over to the to the um, so we can see his abilities. He uh, has quite uh, cool looking pole here and some bolt gun and can load in different ammunitions he could load he can load in hellfire rounds high explosive rounds and stun rounds he can teleport once to research the um, jetpack war gear of the cannoners and he can get this windicare agent here um, if you have the uh, hood the, the this thingy that gives you true sight and last but not least she, he gets a refractor field which basically reduces damage he takes. And you may know this already, but uh, I'm a big fan of <laughs> Ghost in the Shell, and this was a, a gift of um, the mighty Keklus himself. So, um, Motoko is in the game. It's a 50 50 chance that he has a helmet on or not. She has quite a lot of sniper, uh, quite, quite a lot of sniper. Jesus. Uh, uh, much damage, uh, very good. <laughs> she has a sniper for some ranged um, support, you could say. No active abilities for her, but she, yeah, as, as I said, she can take uh, help him in the ranged damage department. The next thing you have ac access to uh, for both parts, actually, it is the Inquisitor Command Squad, but she gets some special upgrades for the Auto Hereticus path. Uh, it's a command squad, so we have the really nice looking model of the Lady Inquisitor herself. She can get a Hospitaller, a Crusader Veteran or a Warrior Cherub, all giving various passive and sometimes active abilities. Um, she by herself gets an, this aura here, which I totally forgot what it does. Um, you need to research it. I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot what it does. And she can research also this Inquisitorial Scour Ring, which is Scourging, which is a um, AOE damage over time thingy that looks fancy. Um, basically, kind of a uh, orbital bombardment, but looks better or different, you could say. And yeah, let's go over the retinue members. The Sister Hospitala does what she, um, what you would expect, increases the health regeneration, but also gives you the shield of. Faith Prayer in Tier 2, which um, reduces damage taken by her and units nearby, which is quite the big buff. Then you have the Crusader Veteran, which is a pretty good melee combatant and also decreases damage taken by the squad from ranged and melee attacks, because he has this friendly shield. And last but not least, the Warrior Cherub, which has detection, quite a good ranged attack by itself. and um, Increases movement speed and rack accuracy and cause of psychic damage to nearby enemies um, in tier 2. And last but not least, he has his cherub psychic storm ability in 
uh, tier two, which does a big blast. It it doesn't look like much, but it has quite uh, the big knockback um, attached to it. Um, I will need to talk about one thing in uh, a second, but the last one here is the salad. You may know her from a game that was released last year, or was it this year? I think last year. So it's, she's quite quite zealous. She's um, a more or less melee only comma uh, commander unit that can be attached to the squad and can use his fanaticism, which um, is similar to the priest fanaticism of Imperial Guard. So it's damage immunity and she also has aura of hatred that uses demons weapon accuracy around her so she's pretty good at killing demons <laughs> can be attached uh, to some squads not to all um, there's probably some engine thingies why she cannot be attached to all squads you may or may notice that some of the units you do not have access to by default there's one um, option like which hunter all squads enabled or something like that it is recommended by uh, the developers to have it enabled because all these units that it basically locks you off uh, they are more or less uh, how should i say a core part of the mod now it's because it's because of the long history of the mod that these units were like how should i say special back in the day when it was created so it wouldn't fit in but now that uh, time over time these units more or less became mainstream so they are also a good part of the uh, uh, lineup and it's so it's recommended to have this option enabled and I have it enabled here and I have made the tech relator with in mind having this option enabled. As in particular this is uh, the salad, the hospitaler and Ephra Stern. These will be not in available all the time if you do not have this um, option enabled okay these are your commanders but not all i just see that i have these uh, assassins here these assassins are all commanders as well in the sense that they have commander armor they are only available in the autoradicus path in tier 3 and with a special add-on i hope i do not forget what they all do because they do quite a lot of things all together you have the Kalidus assassin which is a infiltrated commander hunting assassin she has no morale so she is unbreakable she can detect infiltrated stuff while being um, infiltrated herself and yeah she has two abilities she has shape altering polymorphine drug which makes enemies not attack her because they kind of forget that she is an enemy she kind of morphs her um, visuals for the enemy so the ceasefire all enemies are confused by colors a new appearance and do not fire the weapons even if fired back so they basically cannot attack her but she can attack and you have the assassin's touch which is quite a big uh you could say um debuff to a commander unit it gives them reduced speed reduced maximum health and a more or less combat prowess so basically damage reduction as well as best use against commanders or incredible demons while engaged in melee of course so she's pretty good uh, at killing enemy commanders then you have the venom assassin which is the newest this guy is just flexing look at him go jesus uh <laughs> she is a new assassin in 6.9 she does do venom stuff and um, she's immune to venom herself she's stealth and also how should i say uh but cannot detect all the other assassins can detect she cannot but she can teleport for a short amount of um a short amount short distances it's not the biggest teleport but she stays infiltrated while doing so she can use quite a lot of toxic stuff which you have here in the venom training explained uh, first of all that she is immune to all toxin and poison she can occasionally avoid death which is interesting and her high system condition grants immunity to health drain Okay, can evade enemy detection abilities. Oh, now this is a big part. Can evade enemy detection abilities. Now she stays hidden and can fire her poisonous weapon at them. Then you have the Eversaw Assassin here, which is its skull mask here. Has a melter bombs, has Eversaw combat trucks, which doubles the assassin's damage and speed for a set amount of time, but makes him 
Ah, also makes him ignore most wounds caused by weapons. And he loses control while it is on because he goes like mental or stuff. He is also, um, how should I say, infiltrated and can detect. And last but not least, we have the Colexus Assassin. He is not stealth, but you can see he has kind of a problem with him being attached to reality. So it uh, shifts the rail out of phase with reality, making him appear ghost-like and insubstantial. As a result, he cannot be targeted, affected by psychic powers and other abilities in a way. On the top of that, he has lightning reflexes, so he dodges attacks at times and uh, also detects infiltrators and has two very interesting abilities. He has psych out grenades with, if I'm not mistaken, um, da, 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 da. you cannot use abilities, I think, if you are struck with this. Um, but psych out weapons are used against non psychic targets. So it's very, um, most doing damage to psychos, of course. Um, these are residual lasting effects, initial damage, such as loss of voice and ability to aim. So it reduces damage or, or accuracy and you cannot use abilities when hidden, hit by psycho grenades. Boom. And you have the Animus Speculum, which I also need to read because there are so many abilities on these assassins I forget half of them. Causes great deal of brain damage, stripping the enemy from his psychic powers and lowering maximum health. So it's a targeted ability to psychos as well. So he, she, he is a anti psycho dude. He has anti psycho grenades and anti psycho debuffs here. As, a, as long as the collector is feared and has not pointed or can elsewhere, this is effect permanent. Ah, this is a thing that we will see uh, be able. Uh, or is a thing for witch hunters some effects later on as well so it's basically a debuff to a psycho and it stays on the psycho as long as the Kalaxus assassin is alive or has not targeted another psycho okay these are the commanders now we'll jump over to infantry and we start off with the sister of battle infantry in t1 you have access to the sisters of battle your backbone of your army can have 10 models so quite a lot um, reinforcement is cheaper than a Space Marine. The Space Marine is 50. They have not as much health, but they can swarm you a little more than uh, your regular Space Marines can. They can get frag fragmentation grenades and can de get the act of faith Hand of the Emperor. The Hand of the Emperor increases the melee damage they do. So if you want to go melee with them, you need this and need to click it as well. Um, as for most of these act of faith, you need a leader and a certain amount of models in squad to be activating them, as well as um, paying some token requisition. Um, the sister of battle veteran you see here is pretty big, good, uh, pretty good combatant by herself. She has a power sword and a plasma pistol, which is uh, really nice to have. Um, the squad itself can get flamers or storm bolters later on, and this one gives them temporary. Uh, damage increase, increased speed, so basically they shoot faster and the effect doesn't last as long so you need to time it well, you can see it maybe lasts about 5 seconds or so and then it has a lengthy cooldown, so use it wisely it may be in 10 seconds as well, but it's not enough um, let's say to spam it all the time, use it wisely also in tier 1 you have access to the Seraphim squad Seraphim um, is as you may suggest, uh, may think of is a jumping squad which has melee and ranged capabilities. These are more melee focused than the uh, Sisters of Battle ones, so they do quite a lot of damage in melee. They can also get a feral leap in tier 2 automatically, giving them knockback on and jump in. They can get flamer pistols and inferno pistols, with inferno pistols is the big deal if you ask me. Can get a veteran superior as well or a veteran it is called here, also with power swords and plasma pistol. Can get melter bombs in tier 2, can get the spirit act of faith uh, prayer in tier 2 which um, does the damage taken and also have this uh, targeter thingy which increases their damage for a short amount of time. And last but not least they have the angelic visage. Um, it is kind of similar to what the sisters of battle have but also not. It makes them basically morale immune, more or less. You get quite a lot of morale regeneration for the squad itself and squads around. 
but you can reduce the jump ability. So it's a toggle ability instead of a one time and being active for a certain amount of time. So you can have it active basically all the time, but uh, then you cannot jump out. So it's a little bit of micro involved here. In tier two, you get access to Celestians. So Celestians are, yeah, your, your big, um, how should I say, tanky uh, sisters here that um, by the looks of it are more ranged focused. The Celestians for Sister of Battle can do, um, for the, the faction Sister of Battle that is, can use melee and range very well, whereas these are more ranged focus. They also get their Magifier, which also gives them the access to the Light of the Emperor Activate Faith, um, which protects Celestians from morale damage and all wounds for a short periods of time. Basically, um, damage resistant, you see like getting a shield and stuff, can get heavy flamers and melter guns. Start off with these Storm Bolters. Um, in tier three, this is now tier three, you get access to the Seraph Sephirim squad, which is summoned by the Cannoners, which is basically a, a by most times better version of the um, Seraphim, but limited to one squad. They get frag grenades, they get melter bombs, they get can jump and also have this uh, angelic visage ability, which also in turn disables the jump. And if you give the Seraphim superior, which is uh, her with the big old banner here, you get the holy pennant. <coughs> invokes prayers and melodies of nearby infantry recharge immediately which is nice so you have instantly recharged but uh yeah the, the cooldown of it is really really high as you would would think of um yeah can get plasma pistols and power swords depending if you want to use their and um such as a short or medium ranged ranged combat or in melee combat and if you go for the Data Zoritas path branch, you can get access to Repentia war. Sisters in tier two. Repentia Sisters are melee superiority unit, um, really fast on their feet, more fast, uh, faster even if you get the Mistress on the field. Mistress can detect stealth units. And yeah, that's it. You can also use Righteous Fervor, which increases damage dealt, but also damage taken. No, they're losing health you while it is active. Ah, so it's, this is also technically a bit different than the uh, Sisters of Battle faction variant where it's a toggle ability. Here it is, you click it and it's available for quite some time. And you also have a prayer, an act of faith, which is the passion act of faith prayer. You need the mistress to use it as is uh, true for all these acts that you need the um, squad leader for it. Mm, protects Repentia Sister from ranged Damage and increases the range of the engagement. Uh, so, so they have an all melees or all squads that have a melee attack have an engagement range where they kind of charge. You could think so they have a movement speed. If you click this, they uh, increase the charge range. You could think of. <coughs> Sorry, I need to drink something because my voice is kind of dying. Mm. And we will now jump over to the um, other kind of, let's say, the uh, Autoreticus special units. Um, the first two ones are your Kappa and T1 units, so they are not exclusive to Autoreticus branch, but they get more upgrades if you choose that path, so they get more health, more weapons and whatnot. The first one is the Arbeits Melee Combat Squad, which is, as you can see by the sticks, basically your police. <laughs> the police can um, use flashbang grenades to um, stun enemies for only one or two seconds I think and in tier 4 with the last upgrades they can also use frag, uh, smoke grenades which uh, gives them a protection from ranged all units inside of it and they have they start with the enable crowd control hold position which gives them the shield which I think um, and holding the squad utilizes shields for extra protection and but they cannot move they can not reinforce or use their grenades while in this position. I think they can re reinforce. And yeah, so they uh, are more sustainable to damage. So if the enemy focuses uh, this squad while having the shields on, they will not deal a lot of damage. And this is the reason I think this shield why this squad and later on also the sacrosanct 
uh, squads cannot be attached by a leader. But yeah, the other tier one Arbeit squad is the Arbeit's fire support squad. It doesn't start off with these amount of models. You need to get some upgrades. They have these uh, shotguns, short ranged um, weapons. But you can see here, they get quite a lot of different um, weapons. The first two you can get in tier two, it's the locker pattern bolter gun and the smoke grenade launcher. The smoke grenade launcher is special in the sense that it blinds enemies, that it hits, but you only can have one special weapon in tier one. Later on, you can get more. For example, a heavy stubber, which is very good uh, against infantry, more like a heavy bolt or light. The plasma gun is also really nice. Everybody knows what it does in Arbeit's crack grenade launcher. I think the this one and the plasma gun is locked behind the auto head cruise path, but we will see in the tech tree or you can see in the tech tree. And the last three units here are limited to the path of auto hereticus. So if you choose sister fertile pass, you will not be able to get them. One most people know and really love this unit is the Arco Fletchland squad. There is uh, only melee squad, they are really fast. As you can see here, they have uh, a passive that if they stand around like this, they have quite a lot of um, health regeneration and they have also quite big knockback. This one here, the skin crafting lets them attach more layers of skin, similar to how crudes can um, get, uh, can cannibalize, but I think it only works if the Arco Fletchland is died and not uh, other squads. Oh, it does, it does work on friends so you can see here the health even goes up even more and you can use the uh, stim stim packs kind of stim injectors which increases the damage they deal and the rate they move they temporarily ignore any damage that would lead to their death so basically one um how should i say one hp survival and you can click it and you will lose health yeah so we lose health uh, in return which is okay kind of the second squad, um, this is a squad also um, enabled by the Witch Hunter All Squads, which is the Celestian Sacrosanct Squad. Um, they are actually now, um, they were not canon in the sense that they had didn't have a model, I think, for quite some time, but they now have. If I'm not mistaken, please correct me. These are similar to the Arbeid's Melee Squad, but better and also limited to one. They also have like flashbang grenades and later get in tier four smoke grenades. They have also this shield ability here to tie, to stand up and um, go down. And they have these anointed halberd as well, as well as the Celestman Enforcer. And these are all mer um, also have Mertutum traits. So, so kind of a sister unit in that sense. Uh, this this uh, has not a halberd. Just look at it. Oh, this looks good fancy halberd and they have this debuff here the uh, imperial edict which is also a thingy that is active as long as it is not cast on another unit and the unit is alive a uh, permanent morale penalty to a squad they basically say you're a traitor and then you are a traitor until they decide that another unit is a traitor and this unit <laughs> the skions can you can you please move a bit so many people wanted to have skions should I tell you now what, what the requirement is? You will see in the tech tree. Um, they are very versatile. They can get um, uh, fragmentation and smoke grenades. Smoke grenades, I th think, also in the tier 4 research. They have flamers, smoke grenade launchers, plasma guns, and melter guns. So they have basically the best of both paths, like big flamers and melters, but also smoke and plasma guns. Very versatile, limited to two squads, and yeah. I think this what they have is uh, hell guns, so they are in a sense very good against demons. And the, the, the commander, the, the squad leader has a really fancy hat. I like it. <laughs> okay, these are your infantry units. Um, we will now jump over to the vehicle units and we will start with um, the vehicles. I also have like the Autoritus vehicles and the Adaptive Rotor vehicles. Some of the vehicles are shared in availability. The first one is shared as well as the repressor tank is uh, a tier one transport but only can transport Arbeit squads, no sisters of battle allowed anymore. It uh, has quite a lot of health I think but not a lot of damage in tier one but still very disruptive in this way that you have a tier one vehicle. Pretty expensive because the 
add-on you need to get for it is also really expensive. Um, yeah, has this bolter, can later in tier 2 get a heavy flamer, can transport stuff and can use the repressor strike charge, which looks really cool in the sense that it fi <laughs> it's like a demolition derby or something else, that's really nice. Uh, having a charge and stuff. And yeah, all the these units are limited to auto reticus. We have your penitent engine, which is a melee walker with these evil looking chains and quite a lot of health. Really expensive as well, but yeah, really strong. Is, lim is in tier 2 also, which is really early for penitent engine. Um, I have confirmation that this will be changed to tier 3 in the next version. So if you um, want to hear it and it makes you happy, yeah, it will be delayed in the tier part. Then you have to incar cark this name incar car car which is a tank with the demon attached. The demon uh, fires its bolts, and later you can also research that you can torture the demon, reducing the health um, over time which um, gives you damage increase and you can see the, the demon grants also the uh, vehicle some regeneration then you have you here one of two um, artillery units the exorcist sanctorum single firing missile similar to a whirlwind and also has this missile barrage also similar to a whirlwind as you can see here, there are some vehicles that can get uh, extra armor he, uh, this exorcist is one of the units that can extra get extra armor. I am the right and armor this the Lord Inquisitor Kam Karamazov, this guy here probably, with his servitor guy here and his scribe on the other side, is a relic unit of the Auto Hedicus, a walker relic. Um, has some passives, I think supports nearby troops by stating the Inquisitor mandate. Um, Detects infiltrated squad, I think, detects infiltrators and is really beefy by itself and has quite a lot of damage as you can see here. And also has the Rosarius which protects the uh, Lord from deadly injuries for a short amount of time. This is, I think, also like the I survive of 1 HP. And then you have the Inquisitor Mandate, which increases range damage dealt by nearby troops. Also drastically reinforces, reinforces Arbeit and Sister Battle Armor. So. You get not only more damage, but also like for your sisters and arbeits uh, damage reduction. So it's um, basically they are better in all ways. In the middle we have the Nephilim jet fighter. I will talk about him right now because he gets the special upgrades if you go auto reticus in tier three, which is a twinning glass cannon. Um, I do think to remember that its missiles do have some debuffs attached to it, but other than that, he is quite. Uh, capable against infantry, but also vehicles, especially later on with the twinning glass cannon attached to it. If you got uh, for the right branch, the blue branch, he can get quite um, amazing. It's quite expensive, like I think 250 uh, power, so yeah, you cannot spam it as easily. Now to the sister units. You have also a transport, which is Rhino transport, which is not, um, how should I say, uh, limited to one path, both can get it, like uh, the uh, the repressor and the uh, jet fighter as well. Um, can get or has the Lord ha L loud ha loud halos, Lord halos, um, which in decreases enemy morale around it. Can get smoke launchers later on, and get also these auto repair protocols, which is um, similar to the Sentinel. It's uh, the same research basically, like the Sentinel, the worker Sentinel here. Yeah, and can transport stuff as well. Another tier one vehicle uh, is the Sentinel here. The tier one Sentinel by <laughs> mounted, mounted. Uh, how should I say? Um, driven. Yeah, it is basically a sister battle inside, and um, it has a flamer. The flamer itself does not do a lot of damage. If you have only one Sentinel, you need more. Um, also needs a add-on so it's and requires vehicle cap so it's quite quite expensive to get early on but can be worth it this fancy um helmet attachment thingy is an upgrade in tier 3 you can get to increase the armor class from vehicle low to miracle mat hp always stays at 1 to 50 
quite a lot of different weapons available to in, uh, to this unit. In tier 1 you're stuck with the flamer, which does basically no damage against buildings. So if you're facing sentinels, like on the other way around, you want to have a turret or upgrade a listening post to um, be safe. It can get a multi-laser for anti-infantry and auto cannon for more or less anti-everything or heavy infantry. And then it can get rocket launchers and missile launchers. These are limited to the Tiptosaurus branch, if I'm not mistaken, or one of those at least is, I think the missile launcher. Um, the rocket launcher is good against infantry, like a grenade launcher you could think of, and then you have a missile launcher against vehicles and buildings. A tier later you can get have last cannons and plasma cannons. You know what they do. Um, in tier 2 you have also access to a kind of tank similar to the Incarcerator. For the system Enemy battle it's the Immolator. Doing some immolating stuff, having flamers, you can get a twin linked heavy bolter or twin linked melter gun for it. Also has the Lord Halos and can have a uh, Holy Icon passive which... Uh, potent and replacing symbol. Infantry units around emulators see their prayers and abilities effects last longer. Okay, increases the, the ability duration of units around. An extra upgrade though. Um, yeah, can also transport stuff, which is interesting for an emulator. And the artillery option for assist of battle is the Exorcist Priorius, Prioris, which is by m all means similar to the other Exorcist of the. Um, Autoreticus. It is not like having this volley of guns from the Sis of Battle. Um, I w got an explanation for it because the uh, um, are really hard to get in a lore explanation and the Sis of Battle want to have something to fight right away so they get more or less the same thing and make it fancy. If I'm not mistaken they it also has this missile barrage. Uh, similar, Acquired. but not the same. Fire. Yeah, it's more. It, it has a higher arc as well. Can get additional armor research attached. Um, attached, you could say. Get additional armor research works on this exorcist. And then you have the exalted dreadnought, which is, I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, is a throwback to the time where this battle could get dreadnoughts. They kind of are not allowed. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, about the law, it uh, starts with these flamers and this mean looking claw can get multi melters and a plasma cannon. Plasma cannon is really nice to have on a walker, if you ask me. Limited to one and also enabled by the Witch Hunter All Squads um, setting. Okay, these are the vehicles. We will now jump over to the angelic units you could think of. The angelic units uh, have demon armor because this is the armor class. Uh, of war works with. You have the cherubim choir. The cherubim choir is like more like your war warrior cherub. Um, a squad of them. They are good against vehicles and demons. They can detect. They can jump quite far. They can have um, the range isn't the greatest but they yeah they can be infiltrated by a research as well. And they have also this passive that they reduce enemy here. They receive divine protection and they acquire chance to disrupt nearby enemies in tier 2. And they are locked behind tier 2. And this is the battle path, so yeah, you will have this passive more or less always available. Unless someone snipes your reliquary of faith, which can happen. The second angelic unit you have is Saint Celeste. It is your relic unit for the sister of battle path. It is, yeah, a living saint. She can jump, she does quite a lot of damage against demons and basically, yeah, melee only unit. And you get an extra research, the Saint Catherine's Blessing, which makes her invulnerable uh, for a short amount of time. You see, she turns um, white and anything, so Saint Celeste is um, all white and stuff, so she gets her blessing and cannot die for a short amount of time, which is really nice to have. And speaking of Saint Catherine, there she is, the tier 2 titan for the Sister of Battle. I had in the reveal of her um, in the beta um, someone asking why a saint as tier 2 titan? Uh, it is, it's, she's just another saint. Uh, she is not. By the law I think she founded the witch hunters and yeah, so 
she's really important for the law and also yeah, a big figure so it makes sense to have her as a tier 2 titan she is how should i say has quite a lot of things uh, about her she she in earlier she was only available in very very special situation where she just miraculously came in and did stuff now she is available as a tier 2 titan all the time for both auto Hereticus and uh, sister of battle she has a passive what was it again uh Divine Ore that severely lowers the defense armor and attacks of nearby demons. So this is the passive. And she can use a big purifying flame. There you go. Dealing some damage in front of her. And this one, the protector, is really interesting. The protector invokes a shield by nearby enemy, not map wide. And you see it probably here, the shield. This redirects damage from the squad to her. So the squad deal uh, gets less damage dealt or even none. And working the power only by units are rendered nigh imperious to physical attacks. Um, it's only for a short amount of time and all the damage is redirected to her, which is interesting. She can also jump. Yeah, what was I um, wanting to tell as well now? Um, I think this is it about her. Yeah, and this is basically all the units, but also is not. There is um, There are two vehicles that can be how should I say replaced at random if you have have uh, an option enabled which hunter vehicles one replaces the rhino and the other one replaces the emulator so basically at random if you have an it is enabled it um, randomly it changes the emulator and the rhino transport by one unit we will uh, move in uh, we will um, jump into a second replay and if you play against Turinids your Canoness here is replaced by Saint Paraxedes, but we will see her in action as well in a second. And there are two new uh, relic units that I cannot show here because I do not use unlimited add-on for this, which we will also see there. So we will jump over to the next replay now. And here we are under the, the second safe game. Um, I also forgot one unit we will talk about uh, in a second. But as I said, we have Saint Praxedes. Uh, she replaces this, the Canoness if fighting Tyranids or if you play the campaign where you also fight Tyranids. So she is your campaign commander. She gets uh, immediately access to the mantle of Ophelia. So she has this uh, divine protection available right away. So you don't, do not research it. You um, do need to research the Libra Heresius though for the map wide thing basically you see she's similar very similar to the canoes um what is special about her she's unbreakable and she has this passive thingy what is it um she also detects by default no detects if you have the hood of clarity here hood of divine clarity you can also jump with the jetpack so very similar to the canoes at some point but um give me a second avenging passions after each defeat she returns faster costs less and gains increased statistics. So basically it this asks f um, to throw her into dire situations where she may die, but she can, can come back uh, even stronger and cheaper. She also has access to the true Martyr Act of Faith once your Martyr the counter reaches 50. And she can summon a Brazier of Holy Fire, which is a very interesting kind of minefield you could think of. It is a... Uh, how should I say? Infiltrated, can detect, and does quite a good of moral damage around it. We will see once this <laughs> jet fighter is going right, you have this uh, field of fire. It does cost some resources, quite a lot of resources, but it it's really nice to have have a, a little more protection going. Or even you can even use it defensively if you so desire. Um, okay, we will go about more or less the sister side here. Then you have here the Castigo. The Castigo is the unit that replaces the Emulator at random. The Castigo, I think it was like Emulator Mark II uh, prior, but then later at some point the Castigo was made like real by G Games Workshop or what. Please, please correct me if I'm telling stupid stuff here. But yeah, it's the Castigo. The Castigo is, um, you could think of a Predator like tank, and because it's a uh, of battle they have all the flamers but they can get a twin linked 
Multi-Melter Gun and also has the Lord Halos to attack enemy morale, you could say, decreasing enemy morale around this unit. And then you have here the Land Raider Redeemer, which is also enabled by the Witch Hunter All Squads in the vehicle building, but only available for if you go for Sisters of Battle branch. It is a cool Land Raider which big with big flamers, storm bolters, a, um, um, no, this is like, what is it called again? Equipped with dual side flamers and a dual assault cannon, assault cannon at the top, and you have the storm bolter at the front, and you can get a multi melter. Yeah, so this storm bolter gets to a multi melter. Has the machine spirit, which increases uh, the resistance for a short amount of time. Has also Lord Halos and has Hunter Killer missiles, which is interesting, dealing damage to enemy. Is it also buildings? Let's see. Yeah, also buildings. Buildings and vehicles, long range, and also get smoke launchers and can transport stuff. So basically, your land raider. Land raider with Lord Halos and Hunter Killer missile. On the other side of the spectrum, Otto Hereticus also gets access to Kira Draxus. Um, I couldn't show her previous because she shares a cap with the Lady Inquisitor Command Squad as well. And is also enabled by the uh, All Squads. Um, option. She is cool. Look at her. She has uh, short hair. She has quite uh, an elder weapon and a power fist. So she has quite interesting loadout for a for uh, a woman here. She has smite ability and parallel paralysis grenades. Oh, sorry, Parallel paralysis paralysis grenade. Uh, affects troops are temporarily unable to fight or move but effect soon worse off. So it's a short um, short duration stun. And she has this cool little dragon fellow that follows her around. It cannot be targeted, so it's um, following her around. Does do attack with fire and stuff and dies if she dies. You can see here, has some things. Psycho skill, um, a lesser smite ability as well as a dimensional anchor. You can see and here what Sang does and vice versa, okay, and the damage suffered automatically transferred to Lady Truxes, so yeah, so it cannot be targeted basically. Um, yeah, so it's nice to have this little pet of hers you could think of. The Rhino of the um, tier 2 Rhino can be exchanged by the Inquisitorial Chimera transport. The Chimera has this heavy stopper and uh, what is it called again? Give me a second. It's something multi-laser and has this uh, heavy bolt as well. These flamers are only mounted if there's someone inside. And yeah, can get heavy incinerator or auto cannons. Auto cannons is really nice to have. Has smoke launchers later on and can also transport stuff. The, these are all tier two, I think. The upgrades the multi-laser, the multi-laser to auto cannon or a heavy incinerator. So yeah, so this gun gets replaced. I really like I, if I I have more or less always the option on and I'm really happy if the rhino gets replaced because I like cameras mo over rhinos. And one last unit here, last but not least, we have this beauty here, the Inquisitorial Thunderhawk, a relic flying Thunderhawk for the Otto Hereticus, which has also machine spirit, which is rare for a flyer and has the auto repair protocols of research as well. So. This thing does not die if reused correctly. Um, unlike other Thunderhawks, it cannot land, it cannot transport stuff, but it can shoot stuff. <laughs> it has this big cannon at, this, at the, the back, has storm bolters left and right at all sides, missiles, so bristling with guns. Uh, I cannot show it here. Or can I? Come on, we will kill this um, HQ here just to show how cool it is. I'm really, really liking this one. I'm liking big old aircrafts uh, quite a lot. You see here the battle cannon firing also on the move. To use all the cannons you need to go a little closer and um, probably misses. No, it does not miss. Boom, look at the damage by the battle cannon at, this, at the end. Also has these missiles and whatnot. So it's really, really nice uh, relic unit to have as well. Really expensive. But yeah, you will be not uh, disappointed. Okay, with this units out of the way, 
we will now jump into the tech trees where I will tell you about the researches, some branching uh, availabilities and most importantly about the different tier strengths of witch hunters. So see you in a second. And here we are on the tech tree and yeah, I don't want to, uh, <laughs> how should I say, uh, delay it anymore. How do I get access to skills? you might ask. Here you see it, you get it from the auto head ghost buildings, as I said already, so limited to that path. You need to have an HQ, the assassin research, and most importantly, what most people do not have um, invader, uh, enabled is the Bobonian finest option and the Tau Psycho option. These are the options you have to be enabled. And then it will also state that you need some strategic um, points captured and in turn you need to have at least four and then they will get enabled for you. <laughs> so with this out of the way, we can now talk about the different um, researches and add-ons and stuff because there are a lot, quite a lot of add-ons in this faction. You have your cap increasing researches in your HQ. You have the repressor depot as well. And this one increases the HP and I think model count. And most, most importantly, the HP of Arbeit. It's hidden behind the um, repressor depot. Then you have these uh, left and right bolter turrets and placement for your HQ. And this is your inquisitorial add-on which grants access to your inquisitorial inquisitor, lady inquisitor command squad, but also to the salad and to the lady with the dragon we had talked about right now. She does share a limit with her, so you cannot get the uh, Lady Inquisitor and her at the same time. Then you have the Marshal here as well. And this upgrade is a special weapon upgrade for your Arbites, which enables them to get, I think, more special weapons per squad and more different heavy weapons per squad. The salads you see here are survival only. There are two squads that are survival only. I do not have an extra replay um, or safe game repaired for them because it's only two squads. So yeah, these are kind of, let's say, Guardsman-like squads with some um, Arbeit weaponry enabled. And the last add-on here is your tier two research add-on kind of thingy. In your barracks, in your Adeptus Orota military, you have access to your system of battle units. You can get frag grenades and upgrades for your leader units. And then you have two add-ons, which is interesting. So you have no research building, like for the system of battle, you have an add-on, which you need to research on, or put add-on basically to get access to Seraphims. And in tier two, to the Meltagon research, this is also required to have access to the Sentinels. So you need to get the building, this add-on and vehicle cap research. So it's quite, quite expensive to get Sentinels. Sentinels by themselves are also pretty expensive. In tier two, you get this, oh, what is it called? basically your Celestian add-on, but it also enables you to get your squad leaders for your various sister units. This one here gives you access to special weapons for your sister units as well. And yeah, you can then get upgrades, uh, which I totally forgot what they do again. Um, this is this increases damage and uh, ignoring the cover bonuses for the standard bolters for sisters. And this I totally forgot, I'm afraid. And this here you get also the Sister Hospitala if you are tier three and going for the Sisters branch. Talking about branches, the Sister branch building has this passive ability I talked about earlier, like the um, damage reduction, the, the armor increase, and has a damage, and this is a damage increase for your um, Sisters and also gives you access to some special heavy weapons. And this is more or less a armor or HP upgrades for your sister. Here you see also this add-on which gives you Ephraim a stern. You cannot have this add-on while you have this add-on. So you need to choose basically before. This add-on by itself is um, doesn't cost anything, but Ephraim a stern does cost something of course to get. Here you see this is the mantle of Ophelia. I have just uh, that it is auto research if you have the turn opponent with Saint Praxedes. And later on, you can get the Libra Heresius for your global map vision. Then you have here the Cherubim Choir with the upgrade to get it invisible quite a way. The invisibility research isn't cheap, 
so it's not an auto research only research if you must then you have um, your repentia and your amorness in tier 2 as well in tier 3 you get the upgrades for your repentia um, I, I think this is an upgrade that gives you more speed or something I'm not sure and this is the um, you could say pack for your monas which give her the harness and the skull as well enables the ability um, the random heal ability and in tier 3 you get also access to retributor squad I didn't talk about retributors I think this is your devastator like unit for sisters of battle having access to heavy bolters heavy flamers and multi melters having a special leader that um, has a flag <laughs> carrying around which increases the combat capabilities of units around so sorry for um forgetting to talk about it in game yeah the other branch building auto reticles here um has the passive as well increasing the damage gives you arco fletchens this is the passive um upgrade for your um lady inquisitor command squad which i forgot what it does um it can also deep strike units this is your they were called shield maintenance before they are now sacrosens ah sorry for the name but yeah it is enabled if you have the shrine of militant order or something like the the celestian upgrade so you need to have your um this of battle building here the, your, your tier one unit production building and this upgrade as well to get the shield maidens i call them um here also you have access in tier two to the Penitent engine, which as I said will be moved to tier 3 later on. And these are two upgrades for your Arbeits. This one increases the um, health and combat uh, capabilities, whereas the fourth upgrade gives you also access to these smoke grenades. This is tier 4 though. Um, then tier 3, you have access to the research for your assassins, the stim packs for your flagellants, and this is the um aoe ability of the lady inquisitor command squad and here you see all the three assassins you have access to the skions i have talked about and in tier 4 you can need to have a research to get um your walking um relic unit your vehicle production building here um gives you access to the Neville and Jephardus and Rhinos. The Rhino, as I said, is replaced at random if you have the Witch Hunter vehicle options by the Chimera. You can get in tier 2.5 the vehicle with auto repair protocols and in tier 0.25 or whatever. I need to check if it is really tier 2 or tier 2.5 if you need to have. I think this is not right what I'm showing here. I think you need to have uh, the uh, branch building standing as well. So I, maybe this is this is wrong here. I will um, take a look after and will update the tech tree in the drive. So and here you get your vehicles and here are your vehicle upgrades. This one is um, more armor upgrade. This is the more the better armor class for your sentinels. This one gives you the uh, passive for your emulator you cannot have this research if it's replaced by the castigo however because the castigo cannot have this passive this was the passive that the prayers and abilities last longer and this is the upgrade for your um tank with demon tank that you can torture the demon and in tier 4 and the relic you can get either the land raider or the thunderhawk in your relic ray of faith you can get these all these play prayers um, for your sisters, including for the Repentia sisters. This one is your tier three research. Um, later on, you get this one. I think it's also a prayer for a Retributor squad. And yeah, you can have Saint Celeste if you got the upgrade. It's uh, or the research in tier four. Then you can get Saint Celeste. And if you have this upgrade, you can then also give her the Saint Catherine armor. And you need to have either this research or this research, your basically your tier four research to enable your tier two Titan research, which in turn gives you access to St. Catherine. The abbess here is the second 
survival exclusive unit. Um, it's the app is Retinue, which gives you um, also access to uh, a melee or ranged Retinue member. Yeah, other buildings are pretty much standard. I talked about them already. Your standard um, research, um, um, economy research upgrades and whatnot will not go over in detail. Um, yeah, let's talk about units maybe quickly. Is there anything I want to talk about here? Maybe about the weapon choices for your arbites. You can see here the um, special weapons. Ah, it's only the crack grenade launcher that is hidden behind the auto reticus building, which this weapon is also available by the salads. And yeah, the skions, as you can see here, also have weapons available for different tiers. Um, I think this is it for those. I have also here the uh, uh, honor guard and bonus units and yeah, basically for the honor guard and campaign you have these squads that most of the time do not have squad leaders but have access to the special weapons acts of faith <coughs> and abilities right from the get-go you need to do not read to research it so which is um how should i say very common for uh, honor guard units. Interesting is that you can get seraphims, sephirims, because in campaign you only have Saint Praxedes, which um, who cannot summon those. So having this, them as honor guards is really nice. You can also get an, a chimera, which you cannot get normally in campaign as well by replacement squad. So which is nice, similar to this um, dreadnought, the sister dreadnought also. And interesting in uh, survival in tier 4, it was before only Saint Celeste, but now you get the Saint Celeste and the Throne of Judgment. So we have like both relic units available in tier 2, uh, tier 4 reinforcement, which I found really nice. Let's talk about tier strengths, shall we? If you look at the unit available in tier 1, it is Sisters, it's the Canoness, and maybe Seraphims as well as the Arbites. Tier 1 is strong. You can make really strong tier 1 plays with Repressor, with double. Uh, hero opener with um, Seraphim with battle sister spam. So you have quite a lot of options very um, Good options as well. So you have a, a strong tier one But you it gets really insane You could think of in tier two because in tier two you get access depending on your path to uh, two vehicles and maybe another vehicle from your building like the tier two penitent squad tier two artillery tier two tank and tier 2 Repentia squad, so tier 2 is really, really strong. Tier 3 then enhances the strength of the units you have already for the most part. If you play Sisters, you get your Retributors, and if you play Auto Hereticus, you get your Assassins in tier 3. So the tier 3 is still strong or good. And tier 4 um, wasn't the, the, the best part of uh, Witch Hunters, but now you have access to the um, more relic units but as you can see here in tier 4 you have more or less only the relic units um, not like other factions where you get some less cannon upgrades for your predators or whirlwinds in tier 4 so the tier 4 is basically all about relic units and then you can get the tier 2 titan later on as well so the, the biggest power spike is in tier 2 slash tier 2.5 when you have chosen a path where all the units became uh, available and then you can wreck havoc, you could say. Mm, so this is the tier strength. Okay, now that we are done with the uh, um, tech tree, we will now jump over to the build orders. And there are quite a lot, as, as I said, you have quite a lot of um, units available in tier one and can make quite a lot of different openers. So see you in the uh, build order document. And here you are in the build order document. Where we, as the usual, start with what I call "quote unquote" standard. Um, you get two of the uh, shielded arbites because two reasons: one, they only cost one population, and two, which is a passive, which I didn't told you uh, already, they cap faster. So having those as your capper is really nice. And then you get a second builder, so you can actually build the listing posts. You get your um, so uh, mil military and a generator. Get one sister of battle, get a cannoness, add uh, more sisters later on. I 
would recommend two sisters to get a really strong push going. And as I said, every unit dying increases the fighting capabilities of your remaining unit. So having more remaining units around is um, good. Get frag grenades as well as, as you have three squads and then you have really strong tier one and can go tier two also in decent time without overextending. Speaking of overextending, we have the sister spam I have here. Um, it's basically a generous opener where you more or less get four sisters of battle right from the get go. As it's like once you have built one or two listening posts, you get some more resources. So you, you more or less get them uh, one after another. Do not reinforce them. Do only start reinforcing once you have queued up all your four squads and um, also frequentize later on. For the Shrine of the Militant Order, I think this is here, or the whatever it's called, like the, the first add-on for your Adeptus Orator building, um, you need some power for the Flamers, you need some power, so at some point you will need to get some generators. So after you build your first generators, you could get this upgrade and then you add in Flamers for your squads. And yeah, really, really strong opener. I used it and uh, to great effect already. Then you have the Obites opener, or some people like to call it the all blue <laughs> opener, where you still open with Obites to get the squads, and but then also some ranged uh, Obite units with uh, the smoke launcher, because it's really good to have a long ranged uh, capability. You open off with a generator. You do not need the barracks, uh, the, the, the Adeptus Orator's military to get to tier two, so you skip it. Get another builder, get the repressor add-on and get the repressor tank to carry around these two ranged dudes, getting uh, the uh, health upgrades for all your Arbites, and then you get the Lady Inquisitor add-on with her. Um, I would, I would at least, always go for the Sister Hospital because health regen is really nice. I have seen other people going for a Cherub and the Crusader. Um, yeah, basically, do, do whatever you like. It's always... Also nice if you want to double down, you, this is not mandatory. You can also get tier two earlier if you do not uh, add two more Arbites, but you have in terms of unit cap, I think, yeah, these cost two and these cost one. So it's two, four, six, eight, ten. If you want to go full on tier one Arbites, you can add two more um, fire support squads. And at some point, yeah, you want to add more um, generators and go tier two. You can open Seraphims. I would recommend uh, skipping the generators so you can get another Seraphim squad earlier. Um, as usual, at some point you want to add a generator. As you see here, this is more or less standard, like two shield dudes and the Sentinel uh, builder. <clears throat> and what I like to do is I like to add the cannoners with jetpack. So I have a jetpack commander with a jetpack jumping troops um, with flamers. So really nice to um, have her supporting for melee and these those go for short ranged capabilities as you usually get some generators and get to tier two. Then you can open Sentinels, which I really like um, to do. It's very expensive and it takes you quite some time to get some actual fighting units on the field. You get a builder early because you want to get uh, the first builder gets the two generators and the second builder will start getting the uh, mili militia, military out you need this add-on to get sentinels you can afford one sentinel right away and uh, a second sentinel as well without building a generator maybe even a third without getting a third generator but at some point you want to get another one you need to get uh, one vehicle upgrade right away because these cost two vehicle cap if you want to go for all four sentinels you need to get another vehicle cap upgrade as well or you can only get two um, I also built uh, a third sentinel here um, to start repairing. One thing I also didn't tell you is that your HQ can hold one sentinel and deep strike it on the map, which is really handy if you have like aggressive movements going on with the sentinels. You can chuck in one sentinel in the HQ, deep strike it to your sentinels at the front and repair them there. Really uh, aggressive T1. You need to have at least for generators because these sentinels cost not uh, the standard one 50 power they cost 175 power so quite expensive to build but also maintain in uh, repair you can start with a double hero opener basically like with your sister uh, lady inquisitor and your cannoners um, 
the whole point of this is to uh, basically bully your opponent you could think of having um, the health regeneration um, imbued by the sister hospitaler to the cannoness is really nice uh, because health regeneration on commander armor is really good and the idea is to get more or less quickly tier 2 you can <coughs> add arbites or sisters as well but I uh, like to have them on the field to keep the enemy busy and then take up in a good amount of time you can rush tier 2 which is pretty uh, standard is you get two generators and get your reliquary this is similar to how elder were able to um, take up now they need to get the aspect portal before but yeah pretty similar start off with a second sentinel to get the building uh, started faster and even need a third sentinel because you this is if, if your uh, take up is building related you want to have two units building there for the most of the time to get it up faster but you also need to have a sentinel to build your listing post so that's why you need three workers with this build and the last one is still a meme build that i like to go at, at times <clears throat> it is a meme build because the, the turret is still very weak it got buffed a bit i think but it's still uh, weak for what it costs and yeah the idea is that you build your adapter military then chuck in your sentinel in your HQ, the first one actually, scout with an Arbite and deep strike the Sentinel to the enemy base and build some offensive turrets. And it would be really nice <coughs> if the turrets were better. But yeah, if you want to really play this meme, you want to get even a second Sentinel later on building the generator and also chuck it into the HQ and set it to reinforce the first one and get even a second turret and then you take it up. Yeah, this is just a meme build. It uh, will not work, not even against AI for most of the time. So yeah, <laughs> there you have it. And as usual, we will end these guides with a casted replay. I have been sent quite a lot of replays by Huntington, which is really nice. Thank you for that. I have chosen one out of the three replays he um, sent to me. Um, it is a game he played against Tuck. He as uh, Huntington is uh, Witch Hunters and Tuck is Death Core of Creek. So see you in the replay. And here we are in the replay where we see Tuck as Death Core of Creek versus Huntington as Witch Hunters on the map Fallen City Remastered. And we see right away a very, how should I say, a Huntington special, you could say, opener. Um, I do not think it's very optimal, but he uh, likes to do it and has some success with it, so I do not judge. Um, he goes for two plasma generators and um, arbites, so he ba basically does a similar opener as I suggested with arbites, but goes for two generators instead of one. So it's more greedy in that sense. He also goes for a fire support scope really early. Maybe it's only on this map because he wants to get uh, secure this point here really early and gets even a second up by support sword and a grizzly and drop pod add on even before <coughs> getting uh, the second sentinel so we here we have also a very standard positioned bunker for death Corps of creek on fallen city Expe um, aggressive bunker here um, what you need to do if you see it here is either as you see it here try to challenge it so that it get not up but arbites on the, the, the best units for that yes they can chuck down the the um, engineers but engineers can be reinforced so they do not deal enough damage uh, quickly enough to them so that's an issue so they will probably die here or will at least not be able to um let's say to uh, make this bunker go not go up so there you have it the bunker will go up and what you need to do if you see it here yes it has a bunker here but probably they do not have another bunker here. So basically instead of splitting the map um, over the river, you can also split the map in this um, order. So you can um, do this and Huntington, I think will do this here as well. Getting his listing post up has a lot of power, a little too much power for my taste. This is because um, he has two plasma generators. Um, he needs to upgrade his listing post ASAP to make use of it but he has also lost his fire support squad here which set him back a bit 
in terms of uh, requisition. But yeah, he gets the critical location. Um, it only he only gets it so fast because the these yes, melee squads have a faster capping rate. They were actually would have been better to move um, over here and left the relic for later. Um, he has some defensive um, ideas here, but yeah, the the real money, the real um, thing is over here. Um, the Tesco of Creed could have placed another bunker here or here, but it's really expensive and splits you very thin. But yeah, if you do not do it, then the enemy will take your points instead. So you can split the map any way you want it. You need to upgrade this listen post um, ASAP to have some defensive for the maybe incoming assault of the Death Corps of Creek. Just some poking and prodding and quite a lot of uh, units here actually. So we s now see a Repressor Depot add-on and a Repressor coming out. Look at the costs, 100 requisition and 120 power. So this is only a good rate because it's in tier 1. In tier 2 this is not a good rate. If you're in tier 2 do not replace a repressor if it dies. It is too, it is too expensive. Even if you have the add-on already. Add-on costs you like 175 requisition and some odd power as well. So it's a really expensive unit. But it is a tier 1 vehicle with 2000 HP and I think also vehicle medium armor. So it is just a big tank in a sense. Here we have now assault against these two Jaegers and the Jaegers do not deal enough damage to these um, Arbeids which also throw their stun grenade which stuns them for one or two seconds um, and here's also the fire support squad coming in so these Jaegers um, yeah they uh, get <laughs> put back to order here by these guys with their so we have like shovels again against police um, equipment here <laughs> In what universe you can see this happening, like really. <laughs> this is so funny. Um, but yeah, you can, um, you see now the Arbeids um, moving in with the support of the Repressor unit here. The shotguns do quite a lot of damage, but have, haven't, do not have the biggest of ranges. And um, you see it, they, they have a quite big, what should I say, squad size. This is basically because of the upgrade I think they got. And you have some aggressive movement on this side, but now you see here, he gets the heavy bolter on the uh, HQ, which actually shoots one model over here, gets the repressor back to uh, defend. And does he have units inside? You can chuck in units in the listening post, which I also forgot to tell you. There's so much stuff for the Witch Hunter, sorry. You can put in Arbeids and some sister models inside, which gives you some additional firepower um, for these squads, uh, for this listening post. This listening post. This is not because there's units inside, this is more or less the standard as it looks if it upgraded once. But yeah, if you put in units inside, they shoot out as well. You do not have a tunnel uh, network, however, so that's something. And over here you can see the Cherub with its quick laser beams. He is like having the laser of his life and does quite a lot of damage against buildings. So he is really good at... Um, Killing enemy listening, listening posts. Yeah, so you see now the strategic points are taken over this side. Um, yes, you lost these points, but now you're on this side. Um, you could and maybe should get the relic because it is in hands of the death core. But um, Huntington decides to move even more aggressive. Moves over the repressor. Is almost tier two. Has three generators which is what uh, similar to what I suggested as well has this heavy bolter here to help defend his main base this list this this command this this listening post could go down if the enemy forces to but yeah he is now forcing the issue on the other side of the map so maybe Tuck is trying to uh, uh, how should I say respond to this spawning some mines from the HQ I guess but yeah, will not be enough. Can be is spotted by the warrior cherub, so it can be avoided. Yeah, he needs to get some uh, listening posts here, but is floating quite a lot of resources right now, and is tier two. So the question is, what does he go in tier two? Immediately order reticus chamber, which is uh, probably a good point. Also repairs the listening posts here, and yeah, killing models left and right, and probably killing another model here in a second because yeah. 
damage is good and these are only soldiers with no upgrades I think um, yeah they die has now the repressor here and the two orbites and the late inquisitor on the offense and his listening post and the sentinel on the defense here holding on for as long as possible the auto chamber is not being built because he does not have another builder or well, actually getting another mounted heavy bolter because he probably thinks that he will lose the strategic point and needs to defend at this point here which is, it is interesting because other factions cannot have the luxury of having um, relatively cheap-ish heavy bolters on their HQ so you have a safe zone around your HQ but look at the other side of the map he has get all these points I think that he put in or will put in a sentinel at some point to uh, reinforce at the front how about it's melee squad going into defense mode to tie to do how should I say get the attention then we have some heavy weapon platoon everybody is complaining about heavy weapon platoons but if you camp the enemy um, barracks they can be killed before they do anything so this is uh, how you deal with them in the sense that you need to get close and disrupt them the factory the vehicle building is up the first uh, adapt the auto head to this building was cancelled or deleted or killed and now we will build at the other side having two heavy bullet turrets here on an HQ you will not kill an HQ you you will not kill an HQ especially only with three soldiers and a command sword you will always like this is true for all factions you will not kill an HQ in tier 2 uh, as easily so you need to go around and find another sweet sword but yeah it's also your main base that is getting attacked here you see the fancy um, teleported in sentinel power lift which can um, build listening posts and can also repair the repressor if needed the repressor does he has the flamer could get the flamer here as well but other than that, he does rising and camping the enemy production line and now we see uh, a nephilim jetfighter from the vehicle building and he's now getting also arco flatulence units which will mark the end of this assault he also has one already has one look at those guys go they do not have hands anymore they have these uh, juggling parts because they are I don't know fanatics I guess or lunatics however you want to put it <laughs> yeah and the, the big problem is the tuck cannot produce any stuff because it he is um, yeah contained in a sense he, he would need to build barracks or units production buildings somewhere else um, I think from a economy standpoint he has quite a lot of economy but has no um, what should I say infantry production building he needs to get another infantry building he goes GG although he has a bank of over 1000 so it's a little early GG he could have rebuilt some stuff here. I do not think if uh, wasn't sure if he was tier two already. He was tier two because he had um, a weapon. So this this was not over. Tuck. You could have built or should have built barracks and vehicle production building here, assembly plant, and get some uh, I don't know some uh, chimeras, storm chimeras out, and you would be able to deal with it. Yes, you lost your army. But this, these few units will take forever to kill your HQ. So as an advice, rebuild stuff. If you lose stuff, you need to rebuild stuff. This is for the most part true if you lose uh, points. You can see here, you could have starved out the Witch Hunters. The Witch Hunters by themselves are really strong, especially RQ Fletchlands as well. But yeah, all three squads were being built. But yeah, you could more or less have starved uh, the Witch Hunters out. They had no real income but yeah um, I could have played witch hunters myself in a replay but um, there are actually two reasons why I want to show different people played because a they have different takes as you can see here the um, opener wa was quite different to anything I would uh, suggest but you can see on this level of play it can be successful and secondly I'm <laughs> don't have <laughs> enough time uh, at the moment to play myself a lot so yeah so this is why it is nice to have some replay sent to me so uh, thanks again Huntington for sending me the replay um, yeah as usual as I finishing the guide now um, if I have forgotten even more stuff that I have remembered um, later on like the listening posts holding units and whatnot um, put it in the comments if I told some bullshit about the law about some units put it in the comments 
if you have some positive or ne negative feedback otherwise put it in the comments <laughs> and as usual guys thanks for watching and see you in the next video bye bye